what's up everybody um hope you're everybody's having a great day i'm just going to uh pull up the uh stream management screen let's go Let's see if everything is okay everything is okay good Okay, so it's noon, it is um, uh, time to start. And um, uh, what I want to, to share with you today is, um, I'll, I'll just put this here so that we have the, uh, the chat screen if we need to. But um, basically what I uh, want to share with you today is um, a little bit of um, an in-depth example of uh, the, um, the video that I did uh, during the, the weekend, which is about um, how do you come up with, um, you know, with the framing uh, for a paper, okay? So um, today I have a meeting with, uh, with a co-author and um, she has this amazing, amazing data on, uh, on consultants and uh, consultants working on long-term consulting engagements. And, um, you know, and, and sort of we, we did uh, uh, all of the data analysis and now it's time to, to, to frame the paper. Okay, so, so what I want to, to do today briefly is to walk you through what I've been doing this morning, which is, um, you know, writing notes and uh, to help me think through uh, what this paper is all about. When I uh, write a paper, I think that, you know, and obviously this is qualitative research, so, you know, it, it is applicable to that. But when, when I write a qualitative piece, I, I think um, it is very easy, at least it is very easy for me to sleep away from the data. So it is very important to uh, keep on top of your mind uh, the story that the data are, are, are telling you, okay? so. The way I do that is um, when I'm, I'm writing notes for framing a paper or thinking through the framing of, framing of a paper, what I do is I summarize the, the empirics. So basically I summarize the, the, um, what the data are, are telling me, or at least my interpretation of what the data are telling me. Okay. So basically, what, what I think is interesting in the data that we have is that um, the value that consultants bring to a company, how much they're valuable to a company, how much knowledge uh, they are able to bring, uh, bring to the table, how much actual change are, uh, are they able to, uh, to bring to the table depends on their position in the boundary. And basically, what I've been thinking about as uh, boundaries as spaces where you can occupy multiple positions rather than um, than boundaries as a you know as a line as a or a wall. Um, and so the idea is that the position of an external change agent, so a consultant at the boundary, specifies the value that they bring to an organization. And the the what our data tells us is that. This is a joint accomplishment, but it is a collective and not a collaborative accomplishment. Uh, and, and the difference there is that a collective accomplishment is two things that uh, it things that people do together, but without intentionally wanting to sort of like work collaboratively and, and you know, being in agreement and so on and so forth. OK, so. Um, and if you recall from my stream on, on, on Saturday, uh, what I said is that, you know, that I always have this sort of like two layers to, to, to an article. The core layer is about the phenomenon and the outer layer is about the theoretical contribution. And if you recall, basically what I said is that then um, the discussion between um, me and the reviewers is around the theoretical contribution and the phenomenon remains, uh, remains relatively untouched, which basically means that that's where I, I, I put my real effort is in the phenomenon, right? Uh, the phenomenon needs to be as perfect, perfect as possible. The theoretical contribution, not so much, uh, because 
you know, it just needs to be good enough for for, for us to have it, uh, us, uh, meaning me, my co-authors, and the uh, and the review team to have a discussion around. Okay, so that's you know how I deal with perfectionism in in papers is I make the phenomenon perfect or as perfect as I can, um, and um, give myself a little bit more leeway in the theoretical contribution. So. Uh, and this this is basically my ideas in order, and I just want to go through them to show you how um, you know you can go around and develop a closer and closer fit between what you think the phenomenon is, you know what is let's if you want the research question of the paper and um, and what you have um, in the data. Okay. So I began by saying that this, this paper is about the phenomenon here is uh, how do external agents affect an organization to, to which they do not belong, okay? So basically a consultant is uh, doing something uh, to an organization to which they do not belong. And so how do they do that, okay? Now, uh, then I, I began to think about, okay, so wait, I have um, clients playing a role here. So instead of being about just the consultant, it's about the, um, the relationships, right? So then I changed the research question to how do people use relationships um, for collective but not collaborative change? So, or how do people use relationships to um, change or affect an organization to which they do not belong. Okay, and and this is already closer to my data because it's not my uh, or our data. Um, our data is not the story about a consultant achieving this on their own. It is about how consultants and clients do this do this together. Although because the data that I have is, is on consultants, I need to underscore the agency of consultants, right? Because data for this is interviewed consultants, so I, 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 uh, we don't have the, the other side of, of the data, okay? So we could almost say, okay, so how do outsiders use relationships? Third, third attempt at the research question. How do outsiders use relationships with insiders to affect an organization? Okay, so that's better, right? Now, I did make a note here, which is because consultants are at the boundary, I need to look at... Sorry, I didn't sleep too well um, this evening, so uh, yawning a little bit on stream. On people that are at the boundary rather than outsiders, okay? Just because, um, you know, there is no like single elegant word for people who live at a boundary. I just use the word outsiders in the in the research question. But then when I was thinking about this, I realized that, you know, the answer to this research question is is very broad. And um, it is, you know, it's only very partially about this idea that people move in a boundary and uh, that there are positions in this boundary that allow people to be more effective changes than others, right? So the answer to this research question could be, you know, they um, they work as, and I'm, I'm speaking from, from the data, right? So this is all things that I have on the data or we have on the data. So they could act as mentors for insiders. They can, uh, you know, uh, collect data. All of this allows people to, to affect an organization to which they do not belong. But that's, you know, not the story that um, I think we, sh we should be trying to tell because it's not the story that is most closely aligned with the data. So I ended up on, on this idea that I'm, I'm relatively happy with. Um, and, you know, I just uh, got to this before starting the stream. And, um, and then I decided to, uh, to look at the, at the data and, and see, you know, how I can change or improve this, okay? And this is how do people, well, it began as, as how do people build agency at, at the boundary? And the idea is that, you know, when you're at the boundary or you're an outsider, if you will, um, 
you don't have power, you don't have agency, you don't have the ability to change anything in an organization. So how do you do that? And, and basically the answer is that, um, you know, you, you, you try to, to be at a specific position in a boundary that has, you know, specific uh, properties, right? So then uh, what I try to do is, okay, so, but this is not about just building agency, it's about building effective agency, right? Because I want to argue that consultants have, you know, can bring value to an organization. So this is about agency that brings value. It's not around agency that just, um, you know, accrues power or, 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 or deals in the future and so on and so forth. So, you know, and basically a very rough look at the literature could be that uh, consultants, um, you know, are an instance of uh, outsiders or people at a boundary that bring benefits to an organization. But and this is the key idea. This is the key distinction. Remember in, in the video on the weekend, this idea that, you know, there's nothing as good as a cold beer and a good distinction. So the, the good distinction I'm trying to, to make here is that uh, benefits is not something that outsiders have. It is something that outsiders do. OK, it is an accomplishment. OK, now um, just to, to wrap up uh, the stream for today. I do want uh, to to go through um, a couple of uh, small notes that I have here at the end. It's super important to keep uh, good notes to yourself um, as you as you think, because um, you know sometimes you have good ideas or sometimes you detect bad ideas that you don't want to come back to. Um, so um, I just have two notes uh, for the time being. Um, the first one is that. A lot of research on, on consultants or outsiders is about uh, about knowledge sharing, but knowledge sharing only really covers a, a very small part of uh, what the data are telling us and uh, what the, the benefits the benefits that consultant consultants bring. It is it is really about um, about change here. Uh, now, you need to be very careful when framing a paper, not to sort of like uh, defeat yourself or reject your own paper right because there are topics that are really really hard uh to to publish um so in preparing for for the session or thinking about the paper i went through uh you know sort of like the five top journals in my field and i looked at um you know and i did a search on on consultants and boundaries and so on and you know and for example, it's really difficult to see change published. You know, you, you, see, you see the occasional piece on change, but it's super difficult to, you know, there, there's not a lot of research on change. And there are historical reasons for this, that, um, you know, um, in, in the 90s, a lot of the literature on change was like pretty iffy. So this is like, um, you know, it's not seen as a quote unquote serious topic. So you really need to to, to be careful with that, okay? To be flexible enough to frame your, um, your data in a way that is appealing uh, to journals and reviewers, but you know, that does not like betray or misinterpret your, your data. Second thing is, um, you know, just made a small note about uh, publication strategy, um, which is, you know, th this paper is about um, a consultant, IT consultants. So um, I, can, I can write it as, a, or we can write it as an IT implementation, IS implementation piece. And this would uh, broaden up um, the, the journal portfolio to, um, to pick up uh, IS journals as well, which, you know, obviously there's a limited number of top journals where you can publish in each field. So it's important to, to think, okay, if I cannot publish in, uh, in a top journal in, in, you know, in the management field, in general management, then what fields can I, uh, can I go for? Okay. So that was it. Um, sorry about the bad handwriting, but I, I do like to engage, uh, uh, with material in, in multiple ways or in, or in multiple media. And, uh, this just helps me a little bit. Um, and I hope that, um, you know, it was relatively clear of how I'm sort of like tightening the link between 
uh, the the data here and uh, the um, and and, and the, the the framing the research question the the theory section that I'm writing for the paper. Um, I hope you all have a rest of a great day. I need to go back to the data now, so I'm I'm not going to be live streaming uh, writing um, as I usually do, just because obviously these data are 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 confidential, and so I don't want to them to be uh, recorded on stream. Okay. Thanks everybody so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.